Happy New Year to everyone. Where are you? Happy New Year to you. Prosperous New Year to you. Glorious New Year to you. And I pray that this year will be the beginning of the next phase of new blessings upon every life in Jesus' name. And for those of us who are the Congress for the first time, I welcome you in Jesus' name. I appreciate your coming, and the whole church appreciates your coming. And it's to impart something into your life. It's showing you that this year will be a different year for the church. And for our zones and states, as we're having the special congress at this time, I pray that the Lord will multiply His blessings upon every life in Jesus' name. Today happens to be Monday, the first Monday of the year. And so our members are also at the Bible study. And we're going to drink all together from the fountain of life. The Heavenly Father is going to feed His children. He'll feed you, saturate you, satisfy you. And leaders, pastors, overseers, members, workers, everyone will never be the same again. And for our members at the Bible study, we're conscious of your time. I was conscious of your being there, and the Lord will bless your sacrifice in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour, for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for the beginning of this Congress. Thank you for our leaders, our pastors, our overseers, our workers, all of us who are gathered together. We pray, Lord, you feed your children in Jesus' name. We'll drink from the river of life. And from the Father's supply, everyone will be satisfied in Jesus' name. Refresh your people. Enlighten your people. Empower your people. Make us the best we can ever be. For the kingdom of God. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus name we pray. We are reading from Isaiah chapter 40. And I am reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 28. As thou not known. As thou not heard. That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, now there is no such in of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, is going to give you power. And to them that have no might, he increases strength, it will increase our strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. As we begin the Congress this year, the Lord is speaking to us and is calling us to renewal and is saying that we need to wait upon him because as we wait upon him, he will renew our strength and as he renews our strength, he gives us the strength of an eagle, the sight of an eagle and the motivation of an eagle and the vision of an eagle. And it says we'll mount up with wings as eagles. We will run, we will not be weary. All tiredness of the past years, of the past conflicts, 
the Lord will remove away from us in Jesus' name. And we shall walk and we shall not faint. Now you are going to make the promises of God all throughout this year personal in your life. You will wait upon the Lord. Even from tonight, He will renew your strength. And even from this week, you will mount up with wings as eagle and you will not be weary. You run the race this year. You will not be weary in Jesus' name. You will walk in the way of God. And you will not faint. You will not be tired in Jesus' name. In chapter 41, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 1. Give silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Everything that has worked against you will be silenced in Jesus' name. And then your strength will be renewed. It says, let them come near. Then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. That is to righteousness, to justice. And he goes on to tell us in verse 10. He says, fear thou not, I am with thee. The Almighty One will be with you. The one that never lost a battle will be with you. And the one that comes to renew, to refresh, and to restore us to everything we need will be with every one of us in Jesus' name. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. There is help in every situation of your life this year in Jesus' name. In ministry, it will help you. At every crossroad, it will help you. In any perplexity, it will help you. Every challenge you face, it will help you in Jesus' name. It says, Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. It will uphold you. We come to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Reading from verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 1. The master's call to renewal. It says, therefore, see, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. There's a lot to do in ministry. And there's a lot to accomplish this year. And the Lord will paint a new picture in your heart. He will give a new direction. And it will show the path in which we ought to walk. It will show the details and the things that you ought to do as an individual, as a minister, as a pastor, and as a worker, and as a member of the body of Christ. The Lord will show us things we have to accomplish this year. During this Congress, he'll be revealing everything to us, page by page, point by point, item by item. He's going to remind us of the calling of God upon our lives. And he says, no matter how great the challenge may be, we faint not, you will not faint in Jesus' name. In verse 16, he says, for which cause we faint not, but... Our, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. When it says our outward man perishing, it's talking about a physical body. As we're getting uh, older, and as you're working harder, as you're running faster, as you're climbing, uh, you know, a steeper mountain, you might feel tired. And it might appear that the body is not able to take the weight of the assignment. But it says, it will renew your spirit. That our inward mind will be renewed day by day. And with that renewal, then we will climb every mountain in Jesus' name will cross every river in Jesus' name, will accomplish everything he has called us to accomplish. And this year will be a year, a year of accomplishment, a year of fulfillment, a year of progress, a year of ministry. And you will not fail, we will not fail in Jesus' name. 
the master's call to renewal. The three things we're looking at. Number one, the remembrance of his call. The remembrance of his call. He has called us. And we need to remind ourselves. We need to recall the call he has given us. He's given the call to everyone. And you there, you personalize it, you know. He has given me a call. And I'm going to fulfill the call. You'll fulfill the call in Jesus' name. Number one, the remembrance of his call. Number two, the reassessment or the re-evaluation of our consecration. How have we done it? What have we done? As we look at our lives from the beginning until now, from the time he called us into the kingdom and he called us into service and we have been serving the Lord, we need to reassess, re-evaluate the consecration, the accomplishment and the things that we have done. The reassessment or the re-evaluation of our consecration. Number three, our recommitment to his commission our recommitment to his commission we're looking at point number one in point number one the remembrance of his call you look back and you look at the call of god and the lord is calling us to remember how i called you how he called you remember what he has called you to and remember the support he has given you since he called you and remember the expectation he has concerning you that he has called you we're looking at isaiah chapter 51 reading from verses 1 and 2 isaiah chapter 51 verses 1 and 2 it says hacking to me ye that follow after righteousness it's talking about you as you came to the lord you came through the gate of repentance and then you came through the redemption and then now righteousness you repented you turned away from your sin and then his grace came to you his blood washed you and you were redeemed redemption and now he calls you to a life of righteousness and thank god all through this year it had been the passion of your heart the pursuit of your heart the desire of your heart i want to be righteous it's made you righteous i want to be more righteous and he says talking to me ye that follow after righteousness Yes. Ye that seek the Lord, why are we here? Why are we here at the Congress? Because there's something in your heart. You say, I want to seek the Lord with all my heart. When I heard the word of the Lord say, Seek ye my face, my heart responded and said, Thy face, O Lord, will I seek. Now look at what he says. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are dig. Look unto Abraham, your father spiritually is our father romans chapter 4 tells us is the father of the people that believe on the lord jesus christ and look unto sarah that bear you for i called him alone underline that in your bible brother and sister i called him alone and blessed him and increased him i called him alone that when the call of God comes to us, although we have neighbors, we have brothers, we have siblings, we have the people that will have been moving together all these many years, and yet the call comes to us. The call to repentance came to us individually. And the call to salvation came to us individually. And the call to sanctification, holiness came to us individually. The call to be filled with the Holy Ghost when he told us to wait and tarry until we are baptized in the Holy Ghost, it came to us individually. And the, the call to service came to us individually. I called him alone. As you look at your life, you'll see there have been uh, companions and friends and brothers and sisters. You thought you'll answer the call together, but you have answered the call by yourself. I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. And how did he receive the blessing of the call? Uh, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 8. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, you see that word again is a call. He wants us to remember when we were called, when were you born again? What year were you born again? Under what circumstances were you born again? What 
day were you born again and what was the message you heard when you were born again how did you feel when you were born again what conviction came on you when you were born again what drove you on your knees when you were born again remember how he called you and he called you alone and the time you prayed how you didn't remember anybody all you remembered is that Christ died for you and Christ wants you now and he wants you in the kingdom he says we should bring that to mind and he said in the case of Abraham and in your own case as well by faith Abraham when he was called when he was called I want to say in the case of Abraham he was married but no child yet in your own case when you were called were you married when you were called were you single when you were called? Were you alone when you were called? Were you out of school when you were called? Were you still in school when you were called? How did you feel? How did you accept that call? What did you see of that call? He says he wants us to recollect. Remember the call he gave us in the case of Abraham. And as you think about your own case, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. And that's what you did. That's what you did. That's how you got saved. Repent. You obeyed. That's how you got you got saved. And then believe on the Lord. That's what you did. You obeyed. And then you are following after the Lord. You remember how somebody followed up on you. You remember how somebody discipled you. You remember the encouragement they gave you. And then you now abide. And it says he went out not knowing whither he went. At that time when you were born again, you couldn't have imagined you'd be in such a place where you are today, spiritually, materially, in family-wise, and everywhere. You didn't know what God was going to do. He said, remember, remember. And I pray that that remembrance will always be in our hearts in Jesus' name. We're looking at Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 13. Mark chapter 3. We're reading from verse 13. It says in verse 13, And he goes up into a mountain, And calleth unto him whom he would. He calleth unto him whom he would. Why is it God has called me to this, And has, called, he has not called those who are more clever than I am? who are greater than I am, who are more talented than I am, how is it I am here, and so and so, and such and such, they are not there. He calleth whom he will. It was his love for you. It was his plan for you. He knew that your life is an individual life, and he called you. And then he tells us in, verse, uh, in that latter part of verse 3, and they came unto him. He called us unto himself, unto himself. Look at verse 14. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him. They should be with him. Yes, he calls us to repentance. Yes, he calls us to redemption. Yes, he calls us to righteousness. Yes, he calls us to holiness. Yes, he calls us to sanctification. But above all that, he called us to be with him. He called us unto himself. Never forget that. Never forget that. We must not be so busy with the work of the Lord that we'll forget the Lord of the work. The Lord of the work wants to have fellowship with us. He wants to develop intimacy with us. He wants us to be with him. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the head of the church and with the body. And he wants the body to be with the head. He called us to himself to be with him. And that he might send them forth to preach. That's the goal. That's the reason. That's the purpose. That's the destination. And that is what we're going to do in verse 15. And to have power to heal sicknesses. And to cast out devils. And I pray that the call of God will be effective and effectual in your life, in my life, in our lives together in Jesus' name. In 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. We're reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 2 reading from verse 21 it says for even hereunto 
were ye called look at this now this is a calling he wants us to remember it's not enough to say i'm called to be a minister yes thank god for that look beyond that i'm called to be a preacher yes we we'll praise the lord look beyond that here on show were ye called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye shall follow his test he has called us to reproduce his life in us he has called us to reproduce his character in us he has called us to reproduce his love in us he has called us to reproduce his ministry in us in fact he called us to himself and he said look unto me and look at me what i do you do how i live you live how I relate with people, you relate with people. How I love people, you love people. It says greater love as no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. And it says, ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. He has called us to his life. Behold his life, behave like he did, and live like he did. It's a calling to be like Christ and to be reproduced, to for Christ to be reproduced in us. And so that every day you live, you ask yourself, if Christ were alive today, what will Christ do today? That's what I call to do. If you have a you have a situation, how will Christ respond to this? How will Christ relate to this? That's how he wants you to live because that's the calling he has given us. And when there is, you know, a chance to help people, a chance to lift up people, a chance to use your gift, a chance to use your ability to make the lives of people better and to improve the situation of life for other people physically and spiritually or in any way you you ask yourself what will christ do that's the calling he has given us he wants us to remember he wants us to recall he says for even here unto what he called because christ also suffered for us when it's time for if you are suffering and if you are persecuted if you are misunderstood how do you react how do you do you ask yourself if christ was in this situation what will christ do that's our calling look at verse 22 who did no sin Neither was a guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again, he reviled not again. We don't throw stones at the people that throw stones at us. We don't abuse people that abuse us. We don't uh, react. We don't take revenge on anyone because we feel offended. It says so when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Is telling us in this new year, uh, the call he has given us is a call to the life of Christ. He called us to himself. And as he called us to himself, he wants us to see the pattern of his life and the pattern of his ministry. And he says, when he was, uh, when he was uh, insulted, oppressed, he did not, when he suffered, he did not threaten, but he committed himself to him that judges righteously, who is so self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. He's saying that uh, although we cannot suffer for people to be saved, that is our suffering does not get people saved yet. We must understand that if we need to go through some hardships so that we can bring the message of salvation to other people, we're following the example of Christ. If we need to deny ourselves of some luxuries, some conveniences, and uh, some comfort because of the salvation of others, we must do that. And uh, what a time to demonstrate that love and that endurance as we are here together at the Congress. That you might need to endure something to make another person happy. Endure something to make another person fulfilled. And we must start here. And I pray that life of Christ will be reflected in everyone in Jesus' name. Who is so self be our sins in somebody on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness 
Dead to sin shall live unto righteousness. When you say dead to sin, it's like it's, it's telling us that what the people of the world, because they are not saved yet, the people we interact with in the market, in the in the office, and anywhere we go, sometimes they will do some things that are not right. But we are dead to them. Temptation might even come. We are dead to them. Pressure might come. We are dead to them. And the call to come compromise might come. We're dead to them and we live unto righteousness. And then he says, by whose tribes? I said, by whose tribes? We're healed. Thank God you're healed. Thank God you are healthy. You see, the Lord wants to keep us healthy so that we'll have the strength and the health to do all the work he has given us to do. For ye were sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. You see what he has called us to? He has called us to be like Christ. He tells us in First Peter chapter 1 verse 15. First Peter chapter 1 and we're reading here from verse 15. It says, but I see which has called you. That's the calling. That's the calling. He wants us to remember. You're a called man. You're a called woman. A commissioned man. A commissioned woman. Never forget that. Anywhere you go, whatever might be happening, always remind yourself. Remember the call. I am called. I am called. I am commissioned. And it says, but as you which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. You look at other people and they do things you will not approve of. They do things that you say, why are they doing that? And then the devil will say, if he can do that, what stops you from doing it to you? Oh, you remember, my calling is that I'm called to be holy. I don't understand his own calling. I don't understand her own calling. In my own case, I am called to be holy. You'll fulfill that calling in Jesus' name. In verse 16, because it is reaching, be ye holy, because I am holy. And I say, uh, well, remember that call. The call to salvation, praise the Lord for that call. The call to sanctification, praise the Lord for that call. And now the call to service, the Lord has called us to service. There is, um, uh, there is no creation, there is no creature under heaven that God has created and that creature is just to be worthless, not to do anything. And everyone that comes into the kingdom of God, he has called you into service. We're looking at Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 15. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 15. It says, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me, and called me, not called us, called us, called us. There are many people, because they do not personalize the call. Anytime they see other people getting tired, they say, okay, if they are tired, what am I doing standing? I'm tired too. When you see other people, they have different circumstances and they have different situations and they have different level of maturity. You, God has called you. Paul the apostle said, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me. He knew the purpose of that call. And the purpose of the call is to reveal Christ in you, to reveal his life. To reveal his light, to reveal his knowledge, to reveal his truth, to reveal his power, to reveal his salvation, to reveal what he brought from heaven, and to reveal the benefit of Calvary, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him. That's your calling. That's your calling. That I might preach him. Not to preach history. That I might preach him. Not to preach religion. That I might preach him. Not to preach opinions of men. That I might preach him. Not to preach tradition. That I might preach him. That's your calling. You will fulfill this call. I said you'll fulfill this call. He said to preach him among the heathen immediately. Somebody help me shout the word immediately. You will not drag your feet. You will not slow down. 
you will not be retarded. You will not react to all that is happening around you. And because of that, not do what you ought to do. Immediately, I confer not with flesh and blood. I confer not with flesh and blood. Matthew chapter 28. Reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 28 reading from verse 19 it tells us in matthew and this is for you for everyone is for every member of the body of christ is for every minister in the kingdom of god here are the words of jesus go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe how many things all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto tell me even unto shout it out we have no reason to stop in the middle of the way you'll not stop your journey halfway in jesus name you'll not terminate your ministry halfway in jesus name it says we are to keep on doing this even unto the end unto the end mark chapter 13 unto the end mark chapter 13 unto the very end the strength to continue to the very end the lord will give you the energy spiritual energy to continue to the very end the lord will give you in jesus name what, whatever happened in the past years we have crossed over into the new year forget the past a new dawn has come in mark chapter 13 reading from verse 10 it says in verse 10 and the gospel must first be published among all nations all nations look at verse 13 and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that shall endure tell me what follows unto the end unto the end you will endure to the end you remain unto the end you'll be faithful unto the end you will keep serving the lord working for the lord unto the end in jesus name the souls that shall come into the kingdom through you before you leave this earth you are going to bring them in in jesus name unto the end it says the same shall be saved it tells us in luke chapter 19 unto the end god will help you you will continue You'll be strong unto the end, faithful unto the end. Can you see how the amen is dying down? Luke chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And remember, he has called us to himself to be like him, to walk like him, to pray like him to love like him and to labor like him and what did he do he came to seek and to save that which was lost look at verse 13 and he called his 10 servants together he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10, ten pounds and said unto them what is he saying unto you i said what is he telling you as this year comes to beginning today and then you are looking at the rest of the year what's he telling you to do every day of this year occupy till i come occupy till i come we're looking at john chapter 20 verse 21 john chapter 20 reading from verse 21 he wants us to remember remember his call the remembrance of his call john chapter 20 verse 21 then said jesus to them peace be unto you your heart peace be unto you your family peace be unto you and as in the ministry peace be unto you as my father have sent me even so have i sent you as the father sent him even so as he sent you and jesus did not stop his journey halfway you will not stop your journey halfway your ministry will not terminate halfway you will continue to the very end in jesus name revelation chapter 2 revelation chapter 2 reading from verse 25 but that which ye have already hold fast until when 
until I come. That which ye have already. Thank God you have salvation. Hold fast till I come. Thank God you have the promises of God. Hold fast till I come. Thank God you have the call of God upon your life. Don't drop it. Don't throw it down. Hold fast until I come. Thank God you have opportunities in the kingdom. Hold fast till I come. Don't let this government tell you. Just, just say, okay, if they want to take uh, the service from me, no problem. No, there's no problem. There's no problem. But you have a promise. And you have, uh, you have, an, you have an assignment. And you will hold fast to that assignment and you will gird it with your face in Jesus name in verse 20 it says and he that overcometh he that overcometh I'm looking at the overcomer there he that overcometh and keepeth my works tell me unto the end unto the end to him will I give power over the nations to him will I give power over the nations will see the call the call he has given us and it says remember Abraham I called him alone so you are not comparing yourself with other people I called him alone he obeyed he responded he believed he surrendered and I blessed him he's going to bless you and I increased him, is going to increase you. He will do it in Jesus' name. Now, the question is, how have we feared? How have we done? In this call that he has given us, that leads us to point number two, the reassessment and the re-evaluation of our consecration. He's called us to righteousness. Have we done that? He's called us unto the work have we done that it's called us to service have we responded to that we're looking at revelation chapter 2 revelation chapter 2 i'm reading from verses 4 and 5 revelation chapter 2 verse 4 nevertheless i have somewhat against thee here the Lord was talking to uh, the church and to the leadership of uh, the church in Ephesus he said, I need to examine what you are doing. I need to re-evaluate your commitment. I need to re-evaluate all the promises you gave and how you are responding to those promises. I want to re-evaluate your consecration and your vow and your submissiveness. I want to re-evaluate how you have been doing the work I committed to your hand. Now you remember the call. You need to re-evaluate that call. And the Lord is saying, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. Would you remember how you had love for God and love for the work of God in the years that passed, in the earlier years of your Christian life, in the earlier years of your Christian ministry? Do you remember how you will get to anyone? No mountain will stop you. No river will stop you. No economy will stop you. And no situation will stop you. It says, where is that love? Where is that love? The first love. The, the sacrificial love. The love that gave yourself. And the love that enthusiastically, sacrificially, excitedly poured your life into the lives of other people. In visitation. In follow up. In discipleship. In reading the Bible to others. In, in spending your money to reach other people. To make sure that more people, more people come into the kingdom. Without anybody pushing you. Anybody driving you. Anybody motivating you. Anybody trying to make you to do it. You did it because it came out of the very center of your heart. With love. It says in verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent it says there's still chance this new year is a chance to serve the lord more and a chance to serve the lord with that first love again in jesus name and do the first words do the first words or else i will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent you know what he's saying there it says, I've given you brain. If you don't choose the brain, that brain will die. It will atrophy. It, it says, I've given you legs to walk. If you tie the legs now, you don't choose the legs. Those legs will go out of service. I've given you hands to do, to work. If you don't choose the hands, 
the, the hand will forget all that it needs to do. I'm giving you a mind to think. If you are not using the mind to think, you soon lose the ability of thinking. I've given you a call. I've given you a service. I've given you responsibility. I've given you assignment. If you don't care for that assignment, and if you lose your first love, and you let it go like that, it says, I'll take that opportunity away, you will not lose your chance. I said you'll not, not lose your ministry. We're looking at uh, chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, the reassessment, the re-evaluation of our consecration. In um, chapter 3 of Revelation, I'm reading here from verse 2. It says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for I have not found your works perfect before God. I have not found your works. That's in the plural. That's in the plural. Many times the Lord has given us a call. He's given us a call to serve in number one, call number two, call number three. And we're to combine everything together. And we're to make sure that we're up and doing in every area, in every segment that he has given us. But sometimes we're abandoned three and we concentrate on one. We abandon five, we concentrate on one. Out of ten, we abandon nine, and we concentrate on one. He's telling us, I've not found thy works in the plural perfect before God. Think about all that God has given you. You have the ministry of intercession or prayer. How is that? The ministry of preaching. How is that? The ministry of evangelism. How is that? The ministry of pastoring. How is that? The ministry of teaching the word of God. How is that? The ministry of encouraging. Encouraging the people that are downtrodden. How is that? The ministry of reaching out. God has given you a special ministry. If you hear that somebody is backsliding, you will search them out. You will look for them. And when you talk to them by the grace of God they'll come alive and they'll be restored look at all the opportunities the Lord has given you and all wipe away the regrets and wipe away the disappointment disappointments no more this year in Jesus name misunderstanding no more this year in Jesus name be your best for the kingdom of God do your best for the kingdom of God run as fast as you can for the kingdom of God your work will not be in vain it will reward you in Jesus name re-evaluating and reassessing our commitment our consecration we're looking at Luke chapter 22 Luke chapter 22 I'm reading from verse uh, reading from verse 33 in verse 33 and he said unto him here is peter talking to the lord lord i am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death that's first love talking that's fervency of love talking that's commitment talking that's sincere consecration talking he really wanted to do that he really believed that i'm going to go with thee into prison and into death look at verse 50 and one of them smote the uh, servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear that's peter that's peter he put what he said into action he said no you'll not arrest my lord you'll not arrest my master no you're not going to take christ out of here while i'm here he had his sword in the hand he brought it out he was ready to fight but look at verse 51 and jesus answered and and jesus answered and said suffer ye thus far and he touched the ear and healed him look at what jesus is doing we're trying to defend him I was trying to protect him and he said put in the ear back and eventually the person that said I love you so much I'll die with you I love you so much I'll go anywhere with you I love you so much I will defend you I love you so much I'll protect you look at verse 54 in verse 54 then took they him they took Jesus and led him and brought him unto uh, into the high priest's house and Peter, tell me out aloud. Tell me again. Followed a far off. You see, when you begin to slow down, I'll still work for God. I slow down. As he come to Bible study, I slow down. I still serve, but I slow down. And then I begin to follow a far off. 
not as fast as I used to be. And yet God has given you the strength. He has given you the vision. He has given you the power. He has given you the promise. And he has given you all the supply. And all the opportunities he has given. And then you begin to follow afar off. Verse 54 is not responding well to verse 33. Verse 33 said, I am ready. I'm ready to go with thee, side by side with thee, even if it means into prison or into death. But now Peter following a afar off. Look at verse 57. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. I know him not. That's what the Lord is telling us, to re-evaluate our commitment. You see, if you slow down, and you're slowing down, and you're slowing down, eventually you will stop. Think about it like this. You, you give a hundred percent unto the Lord. And eventually, in a week, you take, you say, I think I just want to relax a little. Take one percent away. The second week, I take another one percent away. And one percent is almost like nothing out of one hundred. And the third week, I take another one percent away. One out of hundred is nothing by itself. But as you slow down and slow down and slow down, eventually one year, you'll take 52% away. That's much. That's much. You see, as you lessen your commitment, as you lessen your love, as you lessen your reading the Bible, as you lessen your prayer, as you lessen the goodness, the quality of what you offer to the Lord, little by little, you take things away. I pray you'll bring them back. I said you'll bring them back. And this time of Congress will be the time of recommitment and, re and, and uh, reconsideration in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, let, let's look at Galatians to explain what we are talking about. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 15. Galatians chapter 4 verse 15. Galatians chapter 4 verse 15. Where is then the blessedness you speak of. We could ask Peter, what's the blessedness you spoke of? We could ask uh, any of the people that are slowing down, any of the people that, you know, are withdrawing their service, any of the people that are retarding uh, their progress, we could ask them, where is the blessedness you speak of? My brother, we can give a lot of reasons and we can, we can justify ourselves. This is why I've done that. This is why I'm slowing down. This is why I'm not trying as fast as before. This is why, this is why. But all those reasons will not match the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Look at verse 15 again. Where is then the blessedness you speak of? For I bear your record. That if it were, if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. That uh, word me there. Uh, let's put Christ there because you know you don't know Paul directly. Paul was talking to the Galatians and he said, "You could have plucked out your eyes. You could have given them to me." But we know Christ, our Savior. We know Christ, our Lord. And we say, I will run any errand for Christ, my Savior. I will go any length for Christ, my Savior. I will endure anything for Christ, my Savior. I will preach. I will pray. I will run. I will reach people. I will touch people's lives for Christ, my Savior. But now, how are you doing it? As you evaluate and as you assess your commitment, your consecration, what is the blessedness you spoke of in your vow, in your consecration, in your laying everything down? Because I bear your record that if it had been possible, you could have plucked out your eyes, you could have given them unto Christ. You could have given them unto Christ. What happened then? We're looking at chapter 5, chapter 5 of Galatians, and I'm reading from verse 7. You did run well. 
You did not do well. Looking at how you evangelize, you did not do well. Looking at how you touch lives, you did not do well. Looking at how you sacrificially gave of your substance, of your money, of everything you had in the past, you did not do well. Looking at how you regularly attended Bible study and you'll not be sleeping at the Bible study, you did not do well. Looking at how you invited people come to retreat, come to program, come to the third, the third weekend, the program, you were exhausted excited about it you did run well looking at how you contacted people who have responded you contacted them on phone or contacted them in any way you did run well looking at how you had quiet time and you read your bible and you almost swallowed and the whole bible you did run well and looking at how you you know will go to other people teach them you teach them the word of god you teach them other things you need to teach them you did run well who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth what happened what happened why did you slow down why did you cut that down i pray the lord will bring us back i said will bring us back he'll bring me back in jesus name he'll bring you back in jesus name we will serve the lord again with all our strength we'll serve the lord we we'll love the lord again with all our strength we we'll love the lord in jesus name it tells us in Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 14, Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling. Keep on pressing, pressing forward, moving forward, going forward, and going higher. Nothing will hinder you. All the chains are broken this year in Jesus' name. All the fetters are broken this year in Jesus' name. Anything that will stop you, anything that will, re that will retard, that will slow down your forward movement, the Lord will take them away in Jesus' name. And you will cooperate with the Lord. Say, I will cooperate with the Lord. Say that, I'll cooperate with the Lord. I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That leads us to point number three our recommitment our recommitment whatever we have done in the past that's gone that's past in the record of god he knows what is going to reward but leave that in the hands of god a new day has come a day of new opportunity a day of new service a day of new recommitment and we're going to serve the Lord greater than ever before this new year in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 5, Deuteronomy chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 5, we're reading from verse 29. Oh, that they, there was such an heart in them that they will fear me and keep all my commandments always that I might be, but that it might be well with them and with their children forever. As you recommit yourself to serve the Lord with new strength, with new zeal, with new energy, with new commitment, with a renewed sacrifice, this year it will be well with you. It will be well with your family. As you go out, it will be well with you. You come in, it will be well with you. Everything you do, the Lord will bless and prosper in Jesus' name. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29. In verse 30, chapter 32, verse 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Oh, that they were wise, and they considered this, that they will consider their latter end. Look up here for a moment. What if you fold your hand? What if you close your mouth? What if you tie your legs? What if you stay in one place? What if you sleep the rest of your life in your own house? What if you never go out? What if you never touch other people's lives? What if you spend every day just eating and sleeping, eating and sleeping? What if you spend the rest of your life only luxury and enjoyment and comfort what shall that mean in eternity there'll be no reward there'll be no reward you go empty-handed to eternity and then when you see other people that are less talented than you are 
other people that are less prayerful than you are other people that are less uh, clever than you are they'll have stars in their crown and then you will have nothing you will have something look at verse 29 oh that they were wise and that they understood this that they would consider their latter age consider your latter age consider the progress you make now and then the uh, the reward you are going to have uh, let's look at psalm 81 psalm 81 i'm reading from verse 13 psalm 81 from verse 13 Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. As the Lord is calling us back to recommitment and reconsecration. And the Lord is calling us back and is saying, recover, recover your lost consecration, your lost vow, your lost recommitment. And it says, so that my people had hearkened unto me and Israel had walked in my ways. As we rise up and as we do the work of God more this year, look at what God said they would do. Verse 14, as your son have subdued their enemies. As you serve the Lord, he will submit all, he will subdue all enemies before you in Jesus' name. And turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. This year will be the time he'll feed you with the finest of blessings in Jesus' name. And with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied them? He said, Oh, that my people will reconsecrate themselves, recommit themselves, and yield themselves all over again unto me. Then he said something new will happen in your life. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48. I'm reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 18. Oh, that thou art hacking to my commandments. You see how the Lord has been repeating that. Oh, that my people will listen. Oh, that my people will come back. Oh, that my people will reconsecrate, recommit themselves. Oh, that thou art hacking to my commandments. That then at thy peace be as a river. Thy peace will be as a river. And thy righteousness as waves of the sea. It will be so in Jesus' name. What's the response to that? What's our, resp what's our response now? We're looking at Psalm 139. Psalm 139. And we're reading from verse 23. Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God. Look at my commitment. Search me, O God. Look at my zeal. Search me, O God. Look at my sacrifice. Search me, O God. Look at my continuation in the commitment, consecration, in the co commission you have given me. Search me, O God. Look at how I have responded to the commission, to the call that you gave me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. If I see the hungry dying and I have the bread of life and I didn't give them, see, if there be any wicked way in me, if I see the need of teaching the word of God and I have the gift of teaching and yet I withhold that and I'm busy with other things, if there be any wicked way in me, if I see a man that is up dead between Jerusalem and Jericho and then I looked at him and passed by and allow him to waste away like that. See, if there be any wicked way in me, if I see anyone that is born into the kingdom, a babe, and they need to be fed and they need to be, uh, they need to be catered for and nurtured and nursed and yet I overlook that. See, if there be any wicked way in me, if the Lord has given me a great opportunity that other people have not had and yet I'm holding on to that opportunity i'm not making use of that if i'm lazy if i'm idle if i'm indolent if i'm retarded if i'm holding back if i'm not giving my all if i'm shifting away from my first love if i'm shifting away from the first face see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting restoration has come 
lead me in the way everlasting recovery has come lead me in the way everlasting a bright light will shine before you and your path will be righteousness all through your life in jesus name and the lord is saying that whatever you have discovered whatever the lord is revealing to you as to the fact that you are slowing now you are retarding now you are holding back the first love is no more there the first faith is no more there it's calling you back and it's ready to lead you it will strengthen you i said it will strengthen you and this period of the congress you recover every love and you recover every faith and you recover every sacrifice you recover everything you were doing in the past that you stopped doing you recover in jesus name because they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength I said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not fade. That's you. That's you. That's you. You are going to wait upon the Lord and the Lord will renew your strength. Where are you there? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord he's going to renew your strength. He's going to renew your strength. This new year is a year of service. This new year is a year of progress. This new year is a year of recommitment. This new year is a year of serving the Lord, serving the Lord faithfully, serving the Lord courageously, serving the Lord honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. This new year is the year of bringing all your gift, all your sacrifices, everything you've got bringing your personality bringing everything you've got to the altar once again and saying lord i will serve you lord i will serve you lord i will serve you pray 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 unto the lord he'll renew your strength 